<laughs> Welcome to the morning show. When I first realized I wanted to be an artist was probably when I was like, I don't know, that's a, that's a hard question to answer sometimes because you don't always remember because I've always, I've always wanted to do one and I've always loved it as a kid. But then I always had teachers who told me like, you know, you should really pursue it. But I thought it was really, really bad. Like, I was bad. I look back at my books and I was, I was terrible. And now I'm like, you know, it's just, it takes practice. Like anyone could be an artist, which is what I believe. People like think, oh no, I could just do stick men and blah, 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 blah. I'm like, no, you can actually do art. But there's one of my favorite quotes by like Picasso. He says, everyone is born an artist. It's whether or not you stay like, stay an artist growing up or something like, something like that. So I don't know if I was answering the question. When I started figuring out that I wanted to continue doing art as a full-time thing, so when I was probably at school and I just thought, this is, this is what I'm like, this is my calling. I thought, I was just like, I have to. I'm trying, I'm trying to find like a moment. I'm trying to think of like a moment where I was like, I don't know, I think as an artist, you kind of just know, I think. There's like a, there's just like a feeling like you just know, like when they say in school, they give you like a weird project like design a sneaker or like like I did a design a sneaker actually and I was like oh my god this is insane like I did I created like a shoe for my old Air Force Ones did a mold of it and I put like like the the tongue of the shoe was like a snake head and then I was getting like inspiration from like Chihuly so I had like Chihuly like round things coming out of the shoe put bells on the shoe just like crazy but I just like just loved the creativity part of it. It just continued more and more and more. It's where I felt most like comfortable and at home when I was doing like artwork. You just like, like what's the right like word to say when you're just you lose time? You just like lose time. I need to find a better word for that. <laughs> anyway, I, I'm in my own world. There we go. Okay, lesson I learned at school would probably be don't follow the rules. <laughs> that is one thing for sure. So when I was at Fine Arts College, we had these two amazing teachers, insane. And every week we would do different things that they give us to do. So it'd be like, they did, gave us a project on chats. So they'd all give us like pencils and all different numbers. And we'd have to get, we'd have um, like, you know, those paper plates. We put like one, two, three, four, five, six around the plate and we'd spin the plate. And then whatever number would land on, we would draw in that color or something, it was something like that. And just every week was just something different. And they challenged us a lot. Like one time I had to, they were like, do a self portrait, everyone. And my teacher would get a rolling pin full of paint and roll straight over the portrait we just drew. And he says, and again, and we would layer and layer on top or like draw something else on top. Obviously we're all like heartbroken. And he had like just spent so much time doing our portraits and then covered it in white paint. It just teaches you to like keep going and going and practice, which was really good. Since I left fine arts, I it was a bit like, what do I do now kind of thing. It was a bit hard to say. Like you have to go to uni, you have to apply to all these things. And then at the time I didn't want to go to art school afterwards. I just kind of wanted to keep going, but my, you have to, it was good to do like a foundation where you try out everything. Sculpture to glass making, to bronzing, to painting, to like, I saw people on skateboards with paint and like skateboarding over canvas, like it's really crazy. But the scary part is more like now you're not in school anymore and you're not being nurtured. And now people are like, okay, that's actually really bad what you made. Or you have to take it, like, you need to take the feedback and not be so like, yeah, yeah, you take the feedback, but don't always let it like bring you down. I think sometimes I would like get really sad and be like, oh my God, I'm actually not that good. And then you get all this self doubt. And you know, you should always be a positive person about your work and just keep going. Even if it is bad, just keep making more and more and more. If you want to be an art, like, you need self-confidence. Like, I have a lot of friends that are too shy about showing the work, but I'm like, you need to show and develop. Choosing a medium to work with, it's, everyone has their own little niche. This is like a lot of people, but some people just like to like, they just love painting. They don't want to do anything else. They just want to paint or they just want to make sculptures and they just want to make sculptures the whole time and ceramics. But for me, I just like, I can't not just like, I need to do everything. Like if I have inspiration, like for me, inspiration doesn't always come from other artists. Like sometimes they, you know, they always like, oh, like which artist inspires you. But for me, I like, it has to be like, could be like on the tube and I could stare at someone's shoes and I'd be like, oh my God, this like, so I love this and I have to paint it or I have to make like a collage out of it. But for me, like I'd like, I have days where I want to do collages. I'm just like, I just want to do collages. Or one day I want to just be like, I just want to paint today. Like I have days where I'm just like, I'm not making any work. Like I'm just not. But it's, it's hard to say, you know, with all these mediums, like there's so much, there's so much like to work from.
Okay, well, collages are one of my favorite mediums. And here I have, this is where I get all my source material. I usually, this is one of my, I love these. This is from the 70s. This is one of the Sunday Times. I get this on off eBay, these, these like old astronaut ones. Like fantastic, great colors and stuff in here. But usually when I, I go to different cities, go to Paris, go to New York, like I'll just go to like secondhand bookshops and like look through all this old material. Like it's just amazing. And they have to be, I only find, I only like things that are like past the 80s because I think it's just a whole different time period. And I find it like really nostalgic for some reason. Like, I, was, I don't know why, I just feel like that era, even till like the 40s, like this, for example, I bought the whole collection of the war illustrated, which is the 1940s which is all the magazines they wrote during the war and have like all this amazing footage from the war and I just think it's fantastic. Sometimes I like get this book which is from Morocco and then I'll get an astronaut and then I'll just get something from the war and then it all just slowly comes together and like and then at the end it'll it makes like a scene. Sometimes I don't, you can't pre-plan a collage like sometimes it could take weeks to like make a collage. What's that the way you're holding the window open? <laughs> Collages led me to do silkscreen prints of them because I was like, you know, these are so great. Don't you think I could like make more of them in a different way? So I did these. So coming from this collage here, which is like a boy from Teddy's boarding school, actually, I did some silkscreen prints of him and another collage that I did, which is this one, which is Lost in Paradise. And then from that, I was like, wow, why don't I do this on t-shirts too? But yeah, I'm just a hoarder. So, okay. So this is where I keep all my goodies. My secret stash of stuff that I hoard, which goes back to the same nostalgia of the of like the 80s and the 70s. So I have like all these like clocks and like, I like the niche weird tacky things. They're my favorite. I got old like ping pong machine, pinball, pinball machine. We also have Diana here, little puzzle. But yeah, the, the weirder the better, like, these are my favorite things to collect, I love them. Do we need to talk about it specifically? <laughs> so, most of the subjects that I've painted out are people I used to see, or like, boys that I was like in love with, and then like, broke my heart in some way, and then this was just, this was just a good way of just like, getting it off my chest. <laughs> so here's an example of one of the paintings that I did. Um, this is, one's a bit different. This one I wrote things that I said like we said to each other between me and the person that I was like getting my emotional baggage off. So like there's just things like oh like I miss you, I hate you, I don't want to see you and like all these kinds of things and it's a really therapeutic way of just like getting it off your chest and I thought it was really nice and you know it doesn't look like a hateful painting. I don't hate anyone, I just dislike people sometimes a lot but you know, we're friends still so it's all good. I titled all these paintings about um, their, their names put into anagrams. So this one's called Stab Me Yet. So that's his name put in an anagram, but we will not disclose the name. And some really just don't know I've done these, which is embarrassing. But some do, because it's sometimes you can figure out when your name's put in an anagram. So yeah, they just, they quite liked it. One wanted to buy one and I said, not for you. <laughs> Everyone is different on how they view art. Like some people be like, oh, I don't understand art. And then I, I get a bit crazy when they say that. And I'm like, whatever. I mean, usually when you see a painting, you just instantly, you have a feeling if, you're, if you like it or not, or you like, you want to know more when you stop and stare for it at a while, or you just walk past it. And it really depends. Like people get different feelings about different paintings. Like for example, in some of my works, like I have like, like a series of like personal pieces, but they're about like how I feel and they're very abstract and it's hard to say like these here and, and this one here were personal pieces. It was about me getting out like my emotion um, about specific people. It was just a way of expressing myself and I started them with my eyes closed and I would think about the person and I'd get a pencil and I would close my eyes and do these abstract shapes. And then afterwards, I'd paint them in and it would feel so like, I feel like a, like a weight or like something lifted off my chest and I just felt so much better about it. And I just keep it there and it's like a little box. And now I don't have to think about it anymore. So growing up, like I wanted to do loads of things. I wanted to be an archeologist at first. And then, oh, and then I was like, you know what? Actually, I love art and I love 
the fact about with my collages, it's kind of the same thing when I'm like going out there and collecting all these weird pieces and like books and stuff. It's a way of like I'm discovering things from the past and using it in my artwork. But also like when I talk about career stuff, people along the way have told me, oh, I don't think it's like a good idea. Like, I don't think you're going to make it. It's so hard to be an artist these days because everyone's an artist. And I, I just like, no, I don't agree with you. I will try as hard as I can. And if, it, if I don't make, I don't make. But as long as you're doing something that you love, like it is the biggest thing. Like there's no point of living life doing something that you don't love. And say if I do need to get money, then I'll babysit or I'll, you know, go work at a cafe and make some extra bucks. So being an artist costs a bit of money sometimes. Well, due to with like supplies, like my paint alone costs so much. So sometimes like one tube of oil paint will be like between 25 to 100 something pounds. Just one tube of oil paint. And like canvas is expensive and the wood to stretch the can, like just the wood for this big thing here is 90 pounds alone. And then I don't have, I stretch my own canvases to save money as well. And you know, just everything just like adds up as well. But then when I think about like spending money on all these paints, I think about making money back selling like prints or like collages. And then that's the way I just make money back, and back and forth. And I can spend more money on work and then other things. When you want to start selling works, you have to always like fight for yourself as well because people will take advantage of you sometimes like they'll be like oh like let's like make some more money off this artist but like we'll give them the lesser cut and we'll make more and I just think that's just not right for the artist like it makes no sense like galleries usually take 50% of the artist's work which I growing up had no idea how much galleries would take from you and it's a 50-50 I mean sometimes you can negotiate with the gallery or whatever or and they take a lesser cut or like say they get 40 and I get 60%. But you know, you have to fight for your deal all the time because if not, they'll take advantage of you and take more of your stuff. They're not stealing no money from me. <laughs> they're, exp they're expensive, these paints. So as an artist, branding is super important. Like you have to brand yourself right. Definitely explore, go out there, like try and go to like as many gallery exhibitions as you can. Meet kind of people in the same area as you. Definitely social media is important to brand yourself as well. Like it's essential these days, because if not, then no one's going to discover you. Like, yes, you can be a great artist and stay at home, but if you don't promote yourself, you won't be good. Like no one will know and you got to promote yourself so much. And like even websites, no one really looks at them anymore. They look at your social media account and because people like to stay updated, like no one wants to go and check your website and type it in. Like they want to stay updated every week, what you're doing, seeing everything. It's very important. So I would tell my younger self when people would criticize me, I wouldn't, I shouldn't take it too much to heart. Like I once got told by a professor at school that I was terrible at painting and I didn't paint for a whole year. And after you, I was like, this is the stupidest thing ever. I started painting again and I just, I had missed it so much. And I was just like, you know, practice you know, gets better and better. As well as I should have been told about doing more artist residencies and which I'm going to do next year. I'm gonna do a residency on an island in Brazil and work with people and on a preservation, which is gonna be amazing for a month. But it's stuff like that, like some are free as well. Like you can go like, you know, sponsor you and they'll pay for everything, your studio like accommodation and that's pretty good I think. Okay, so I have a few things I'd suggest after leaving school and if you want to follow the art path career like you should always always do internships like ha make a CV and go to like all the galleries that you want to work at just bring your CV and be like I'd love to work here for free like it's not about the money just go with work for free if it's every weekend or like for like three weeks or one month it doesn't really matter like they're so essential like People don't even care about your grades. They just want to see what work experience you've done and like that's super essential. Doing an art foundation after school is, is what I did. I did the best art foundation at City and Guilds and they taught me so much. And then after that, if you want to continue, you can at uni, do a bachelor's degree. Or I'd say I'd do like loads and loads of workshops, which is what I would do. Like different weekly workshops and like learn about so many different kinds of like techniques and everything. And then from there, just like follow your career path. Uh, is that okay? Okay, I don't want too much competition out there, guys. Don't worry. <laughs> Give me all the secrets. Uh, okay. I'm joking. So I'm joking.